Welcome to worship on this last Sunday of the Easter season. And then next week it'll be Pentecost and our glorious Pentecost season for all of summer and into the fall. I hope that today that you find just one thing, at least one thing about this worship service that you can just take into your heart and hold it there for your week. It might be something in the lessons or one of the hymns. It could be the sermon. It could be part of the liturgy. I want to invite you just to keep your ears open and your eyes open to things that you can take close to your heart. I invite you to gather together perhaps a lit candle or some, also communion, some celebratory food. It could be wine and bread, crackers or water, whatever you have in your home to celebrate this meal with us. Welcome to worship. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, the family of God, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray for God to have mercy on me, forgive me my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, the family of God, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray for God to have mercy on me, forgive me my sins, and to bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Come, Holy Spirit, descend on us, descend on us, we gather is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. 
to protect people who are marginalized get trampled on by others who only think of their power and their money. This is what happened to Paul and Silas who healed a slave girl who had a spirit within her. Even as Paul and Silas were beaten and jailed, you were with them. You sent an earthquake to the jail to release them and they stayed to baptize their own jailer and his family. God you make miracles happen. It is in your name we pray. Amen. The first reading on the seventh Sunday of Easter comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. When she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe beating, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, 
so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Revelation, chapter 22. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches, I am the root and the descendant of David, a bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let everyone who hears say, Come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift, 
The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Gospel reading for this Sunday is recorded in the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter starting at the 20th verse. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hi. I'm so glad that you joined me for this kid's message today. So today we're going to play a game. And the game that we're playing is called matching. So I bet that you have done this before. You have taken two things that are matching and put them together. You know, like for instance, so here is a crayon, a purple crayon. But I'm looking at all the other things around here and I see another crayon. Like there is a kind of a reddish purplish crayon. Now, they aren't the exact color, but they match because they're both crayons. Yes. And you know what? Being in pairs is really cool, isn't it? To have a friend or to have one of your brothers or sisters along when you're going places. It's really nice to be able to have somebody you're going in pairs. You know, Jesus sent people out two by two. So that's one of the reasons why we're playing the matching game today. Ah, uh, so maybe that you have noticed this. So this is a, this is in shape of a big, what we call a chalice. And so it's kind of like the chalice that I lift up at communion. And so the kids that come here to worship, they all have these cloth chalices. And here's another one. Yes, yeah, so they match. These are a pair. And so The kids who come, then they lift up, they lift up their chalice. When I am lifting up this gold chalice at communion, and that's how they're part of the service. So yes, these match. And then when it's time to pass out the bread, so the kids have bread. So I am lifting a piece of bread that kind of looks like this. And then the kids around are lifting up these pieces of bread. And these, they match. Look at, they're a pair. And then, does this match anything that we see here? Oh, I see another yellow highlighter. Mm, That's good. They match. And then, hmm, I got an Easter egg, a nice, pretty green Easter egg. So, hmm, I wonder what that matches. But I guess it matches this. It's not the same color, but it does match. They're both Easter eggs. So, we match them. And then we've got these two left. So what is it? Oh, this is olive wood, and it has been carved into the shapes of Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. And just like this one, this is a match to this one. It's not exact, but it too is olive wood, 
and it has been carved into the shape of Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, these go together. Just like Jesus sending out Paul and Silas two by two. Yes, it is good to have a friend to be able to be with you as you play or you're putting together Legos or blocks or you're coloring or you're making cookies or whatever you're doing. It's nice to have a friend, you know, and Jesus knew that. It's good to have friends. I'm glad that you joined me today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thanks so much for this matching game and for ah, you sending out people two by two because we know friends are good and we so appreciate them. They are helpful to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. I'll see you next time. During his freshman year at George Washington University, my godson, Jacob, got arrested. The first thing I thought when he told me what was going on, I thought, well, good for him. You know, he hadn't planned on getting arrested. See, his university is just a few blocks from the White House, but he went to protest at the Capitol a little further down about financial inequality in the United States. He went to listen to the speakers. He knew that there were going to be some people who would probably get arrested, but he decided that he was just going to leave when the Capitol Police told them to. But then he remembered his grandfather. You see, Jacob is a descendant of seven generations of Presbyterian pastors. Yes, his father is a Presbyterian pastor and his mother is an ELCA Lutheran pastor. So as he was there at this protest, he kept thinking about his grandfather and how his grandfather went to a lot of protests during the 1960s and how he stood up for justice for all people. And so Jacob decided to sit down on the Capitol steps in protest with the rest of those people that would be arrested. Over 1,100 people were arrested that day. They were booked. They had hearings. But two of the people that Jacob was arrested with was Ben and Jerry of the ice cream franchise. So he was a good company. And he was fined $50. Jacob is a great storyteller. And I can just imagine almost word for word what he said when he called his parents. He probably just said, I got arrested. And then his parents would ask him if he was okay and if he needed anything. And then he would tell them all that happened and they would be supportive of his decision. Yes. Who knew that getting into trouble could be a faith thing? Sometimes having our faith match our actions gets us into a middle of conflict. Ryan Schellenberg writes in his book, Abject Joy, Paul, Prison, and the Art of Making Do. He asks one question. So what type of person must Paul have been to be in prison so many times? Clement of Rome talks about that he thinks that Paul was actually arrested seven times. Schellenberg borrows a term from Jennifer Glancy, and he suggests, that to take the biblical witness seriously, we must accept that Paul inhabited in many people's eyes a quote-unquote whippable body, one that could be hit or locked up by local authorities with impunity for disorderly conduct because that's what the law said. And he, he was always trying to get what God said to him, and what he was to say about Jesus Christ out to the people. And so he was one that the authorities never liked. Paul was one among many bodies in the ancient Roman world that were treated this way. Also, there were homeless people and poor people and those of an ethnicity that marked them as part of an occupied people. Which is to say, Paul looked a lot like those who would get over-policed or thrown in jail today. 
interesting that he was jailed even though he was a Roman citizen. Paul did not play the citizen card until he was released. Then the apology happened with the authorities. They came and told him that they were wrong. But let's turn to what actually caused Paul to be jailed in this story. We hear the economic roots of this girl being enslaved and that she is a commodity that is being used but to make her captors money. So what happened to the girl after she was formally enslaved? We weren't given her name, and she's not part of the record of the court. Was she given housing and food? Was she taken in to somebody's house? Did Paul actually walk her to maybe Lydia's house to have Lydia take care of her? We are not told what happens in this story. But we see quickly that her captors really didn't care about her well-being at all because she was of no longer use to them. As a pastor who has served a church in the Bay Area of California, I live close to Highway 101 and then a shipping port. This highway and the ocean are transportation routes for moving modern slaves around. I got trained in how to spot young women or boys who were modern slaves. That really wasn't a fun training at all, but it is indeed due to the amount of human trafficking that happened in the U.S., so how many slaves do we have today in the U.S.? The Global Slavery Index tells us we have over 400,000 people living in conditions of modern slavery here. The Apostle Paul definitely knew what was going on with this young girl and these men. This girl who had demons, but she was used, being used by others who saw themselves as owning her. But Paul knew that he was fighting against a very strong and powerful system of oppression. Paul knew that slavery was seen as okay in that time because of the money that this girl brought into her captors. Even as these men held this girl in slavery, they went to court to plead against Paul. They didn't even mention that the young girl was their ticket to money. They lied by omission. They spoke of Paul being an outsider and one who caused disturbances. But they were working the system in their own favor that allowed them to use a girl for slavery. Did this slave girl keep bugging Paul because she knew that he had the power to heal? Perhaps Paul just healed her because he was trying to uh, be quiet or quiet the annoying voice that this girl's demon had, but he helped her get her life back. He healed her. This girl got healed of her demons and at the same time she got her voice back. And she was enslaved, she didn't have a voice for herself, but afterwards she could speak her own truth. Her voice could then speak how Jesus and Paul had healed her. So, what is the good news here? I think some of the good news is that this girl is healed from the demons inside her. It's very sad to know that we don't know what happened to her after that. We, we don't know if somebody came and cared for her or if she was driven into prostitution in order to survive. We do know that God loves all human life. And we know that God healed her so that, that God then can take care of her and send her resources. Paul and Silas are another that we can be grateful for. They weren't killed during their jail time and they went on to another missionary journey because God had more work for them to do. They both continued to speak out against injustice and continued to threaten the financial structure of the powerful. We certainly see in this story that Paul and Silas were singing and praying in the jail, and even after they were beaten so severely, they then had their faith just oozing out of them as they prayed and as they sang for the jailer and for all the others in the jail. God took care of Paul and Silas because hmm, they had more work to do. You know, these stories took place over 2,000 years ago. 
And yet our society is still the same. We keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. But now may our voices be heard. May our voices be heard as we work against injustice. And may we have good trouble to make changes for those in poverty and enslavement. Let us pray. God, help us to keep working for justice for all people. It gets hard, and we get tired and frustrated. There are so many forces that work against your teachings and your love for us all. Please give us bravery to stand up for the marginalized and give us the words to speak your truth. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of comfort, you heal our body and soul with your forgiveness and love. Show us the ways that we most need to change. Help us to take down the walls that we have built between us and others. Free us from our dependence on substances, power, material possessions, and any person so that we can focus on putting our trust in you, God. Help us to take on new habits that match your will for us and let go of old habits that do not point toward you, O loving and powerful God. We pause to pray for those who need your help and healing.
We turn these people and situations over to you, God. Give comfort to those who are ill, our first responders, teachers, students, frontline workers, and those who are without basic necessities. Give us energy and courage to share your love, hope, and serenity with all that we need. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you to share the peace with whoever you are with. And if you are by yourself, just uh, put your hands around your shoulders and your arms and just say, peace of the Lord be with me. Gathered on the hill, we're gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. There are so many things to be thankful for here at King of Glory. There's wonderful worship, but there are also plenty of times for Bible study and prayer. We are blessed to have you with us and watching our worship service online. We're thankful for all the gifts that you give us and the uh, financial resource that you send in. For those of you who volunteer in many and different ways, there are lots of ways to contribute here. There are times to be able to volunteer within this church, like on Sandwich Sunday or at the free meal. And you are always invited to help out with those. And there are other ways to help out. There are plenty of quilters, people that are working in their own homes on on projects that bring them in here, those who collect book for, books for children and put it in our little free library out front. There are lots of people who come and search that to find things for themselves. So they share also those books with others. And because we are so grateful for all that you do and everyone who is associated with this ministry does to expand our ministry, we give thanks to God. We pray. Let us pray. God, we look at the sun rising in the morning, and we give you thanks for another day. We listen to a child laugh as they go down a slide. We taste delicious food, and we are grateful for the colors and the nutrients in your creation. We give you thanks for all your gifts to us. Please accept the gifts that we give back to your ministry. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful God, everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come, Holy Spirit. Amen, come, Holy Spirit. Amen, come, Holy Spirit. Amen, come, Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today at our feast, Jesus is the host. And those who serve it to you are you yourself. You are the servant, serving yourself and serving others. All are invited. If you're not sure about who Jesus is, 
or about God. You are welcome at the table. If you haven't taken communion in a while, you are welcome at the communion table because this table is big. And then because it's Jesus and all are welcome, that means that this table gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it wraps around the world. You are welcome. invite you to take your bread take and eat this is the body of Christ broken for you take and drink this is the blood of Christ shed for you this is the cup of salvation Let us pray. Jesus, there are no words that clearly and powerfully speak of how grateful we are that you sacrificed your own life so that we can have life everlasting. You showed us what it means to live a godly life. 
When life gets hard, we always feel better when we are able to remind ourselves of how grateful we are for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look on us with favor and give us peace. risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.